Hey everyone, welcome back to the Hashraptor YouTube channel. Today we are reviewing the Parallel Miner ZSX Revision 2 Breakout Board. Now, if you all have been watching the channel, you know that we reviewed Revision 1 of this board and we absolutely loved it. We've got some updates here with Revision 2, which I am going to cover in this video, but we're going to test this thing out. It was sent over to us for review by Parallel Miner and I have not tried anything on it. So we're gonna test this new functionality. We'll go over all of it for you and let you know what we know, and we'll find out, does it live up to the hype of revision one? Let's find out. All right, folks, we are gonna be reviewing revision two of the Parallel Miner ZSX AMP amp breakout board. Now, as you all know, we did review the revision one here on the channel. I'll leave a link to that in the show notes below in case you wanna take a look at that. I wanna talk about this board in general and the marketing language for it states that it's a game changer, the ZSX game changer breakout board. And oftentimes, I've worked with marketing folks before and oftentimes that kind of stuff is really blown out of proportion. But I have to tell you, based on our usage of the Revision 1 board, which we purchased two of those units ourselves, and we just absolutely loved it. And that language, I think, is potentially appropriate for miners. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that first. So one of the big things for you to take note of is why this board is special in general. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you one of the breakout boards that we've used over the years. It's been a great supplement in the past to ATX power supplies. Well, on the ZSX board, if you take a closer look, you can see that we don't just have the six pin, but we've also got some additional connection functionality on here. We've got the 24 pin that's been added to power the motherboard. And off of that, we can also power either the four or eight pin CPU slot. And the way that that's done is with the included cable that comes with it. So you've got 24 pin into the breakout board. And then on the other end, you're plugging into the motherboard with a 24 pin. And then you've got either the four pin, which you can disconnect this four pin or eight pin to provide the motherboard power. So what that means is we have basically eliminated the cost and the need for an ATX power supply. We can do it all in these low cost server power supplies that take up less space. They're a little bit easier to find these days and you can do more with them. You get more functionality with all these six pins that are on the breakout board. Now, that being said, we also have some other functionality on here. Notice that there is a Molex that's on here that you can use to power SATA hard drives and even a spinning hard drive if you needed to, but we'll talk about that here in a moment. And then also on the ZSX is you'll notice that we have a fan hub on here. We have one, two, three, four, five ports times two, so 10 fan ports, and a PWM chassis fan connector on here. So this allows you to connect directly to a chassis port on the motherboard, and you can control the fan speed using any fan control system that you have in the motherboard or in the BIOS. Now, one of the things that I'm most excited about on this board is that we have a new display. And I know this sounds really simple, but just little things like this are so helpful when you're setting up your mining rig. So typically on these breakout boards, all we get is the voltage, which doesn't help a ton. I've got voltage meters that can tell me the same thing. So we've got this voltage display. Now on the ZSX Rev2 board, we now have current. So we can see the amps on the DC side that's being drawn from everything that we've got connected to this. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And we're actually gonna put that to the test because I have not connected this board yet. I have not fired it up. We're gonna test that out together. And just looking at the layout of the board, you'll also notice that we've got another Molex connection over here and two four pin ports. So on here it says remote port. and Parallel Miner actually sells a remote module, which I'm gonna test in an upcoming video, that you connect to this board, and it allows you to remotely power this board on and off. And you all know that I do that through some systems that I have set up with tech and Wi-Fi switches and some other things like that. And I'm real curious to see how well this works. Then you get two four pins in case you have 
secondary power supplies. Maybe you've got two 1200 watts or two 750s or something like that. And you can control those or at least send signal to them from these two four pin ports that are right here. All right, there's two sides of this board that you need to be aware of. There's a higher powered side that controls all of the six pin. Then there's what's called the ATX side that Parallel Miner refers to. And that's your fan ports, that's your motherboard, that's your Molex connection. And if you're going SATA off of that into a low powered SSD or something like that, all of that's considered the ATX side. Now on revision one of this board, you were only allowed safely up to 200 watts on the ATX side. So powering the motherboard and connecting Molex, for example, if you wanted to connect Molex from this port right here into the motherboard, that was not recommended by Parallel Miner. Now, if you've watched some of my recent videos, you know that we tried testing some of our motherboards when we built new rigs with Molex powering the motherboard and without and it actually worked fine in both instances. However, I have heard reports over the years of people building larger GPU rig builds, let's say 10, 12, 13, and they didn't power the motherboard and they had some issues. Now, I haven't seen good data on this, but I'll just say if you want to power the motherboard, anytime I get the opportunity to do that, I do it. And this Rev2 has been upgraded on the ATX side to support a little bit under 300 watts. And I asked, does that mean that we can take this Molex connection and actually plug it into the motherboard to provide power to the risers that are coming off of the motherboard? And I was told, yes, they did some testing with an ASRock H110 and it tested out just fine. Now, if you wanted to spend a few extra dollars, and it's what I would probably recommend that you do, is just use this connection right here that comes with the board. You can see we've got a SATA connection on there also. Just use that to power your SSD. If you want a good, clean, stable power connection, Parallel Miner actually has a six pin to Molex connector that you can purchase. So if you're planning out your risers and your GPU build, and you've got some extra space, if you've got an extra port, just spend the couple extra dollars and get the six pin to Molex. And you say, well, you know, I've got two Molex ports on the motherboard that I need to power. There's also a splitter. So you could go six pin to Molex, and then Molex split to two Molex to go into the motherboard. And that's how you would solve that. And then you're using this higher powered side right here for good consistent power to the motherboard and you really don't have anything to worry about. But if you're just wanting to get up and running and you wanna use what came out of the box, you actually could use this Molex connection to plug into the motherboard. Up to 300 watts power draw or a little bit less than that, you're good to go. One other thing while we're taking a look at this that I want to call out is this fan hub, which is really fantastic because that'll save you 10, 20, in some cases, maybe 25 or $30 of having to purchase a secondary fan hub, which is really, really great. You got everything all in one on this board. Now, as I did a build, I actually did two builds that you saw here on the channel. What I found out was there's so much functionality on this board that's good. You've got everything coming in here being plugged in and all of the wiring starts to turn into a bird's nest. You're also coming into one central location on the rig and some of the cables, it's hard to reach everything that you need to get to. So what I would recommend is there are actually fan extension cables. And again, Parallel Miner has those on the website. When you're coming down here to this, this is gonna be probably centralized in the rig somewhere. And again, I usually had about two that were hard to get to. And then lastly, We've got a simple on off button right here. And if you're gonna rely on this to power the rig on and off, you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that that's put into a central location. Okay, that has been a lot of review and a lot of talking. Let me get everything connected here. I'm, I'm eager to get this thing tested out, make sure that it works. All right, so first thing first, we're gonna connect up this server power supply to the ZSX breakout board. I'm just gonna take that tongue right into the groove there. You may have to rock it a little bit to get a good connection and it just slides right on. Now, while I'm talking about that, let me also talk about the backboard. I'm not exactly sure what this is that's on here, some sort of plexiglass or something like that, but it's really solid. I really like it on this board because it's really good when I grip it. You can see there's some separation between the PCB and this backing board right here that makes it really handy when you're trying to grip this and maneuver it around and you're not worried about setting this down on a table and anything happening to the underside, any of the soldering. All right, next up, we are gonna take this Molex connection 
and we are going to plug that into the motherboard and then we are also going to take the 24 pin and connect that up to the motherboard. So if you take this side into the 24 pin and then this over to the motherboard, I typically had plenty of extra space to get to the CPU power on the motherboard. Hope that makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect that up while we're talking about it. Now again, because of the backing board that's on this CSX breakout board, I can push in and I don't have to worry about really doing any damage to the board here and it clicks in really nice. Okay, so up next, I'm gonna connect these to the motherboard and again, the Molex that we talked about. All right, so we've got our 1660 Super hooked up with the eight pin coming down here into the ZSX board. We've got a second six pin to eight pin going into the riser right here. And just to test everything out as best I can anyway, I've got one more AAA Wave fan sitting in, in here that's handy. And I'm gonna take that and go ahead and connect it up to the fan hub here and just make sure that that looks like it's working just fine. All right, so we are about to do our first power on test here. We are gonna be using this kilowatt power switch right here to measure everything at the wall. And then we've got one power cable that's coming out and going into our server power supply right here where we'll see what's going on with the ZSX breakout board over here. Now you can already see we've got one light on right here which is the DC side, it's the yellow light. We've got a 12 volt right here which once we power the board on that should come on. And if we get a successful boot from the PC if we're getting power to the motherboard then we'll see the PC light come on as well. So let's go ahead and hit this power and see what happens. All right, so we've got power to our fan. That's definitely working. It's trying to walk away on us. And check this out. We've got the voltage right here. You can see 12.2 volts. And then we've got the current on this side right here reading zero amps. I need to hit the power switch. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got our DC, our green 12 volt, and our blue PC light. So everything should be booting up properly here. Okay guys, so we are up and the card is mining. We are set in hive to 80 watts on this 1660 Super. So the whole system at the wall is running 105 watts with this one GPU breakout board, everything at the wall plugged in here. Now on the breakout board, I'm thrown a little bit for a loop because if you see over here, we are at four amps and it switches between three to four and that is at 12.1 volts. So this is on the DC side over here before we've made the conversion to AC, but still four times 12 or let's say three times 12 if you wanted to you know, pick something in the middle, that's only 36 watts. And four times 12 would be 48 watts. So let's call it, you know, 40 watts, something like that or above, which is not 105 watts that you can see here at the wall. Okay, so to put this to the test, I went out to the mining cave and I got two more GPUs and we're gonna fire this up and see what it reads. So one, two, three. Okay, PC side is on. And I'll be back in just a second. We're going to look at the wattage here and then what the current on here says while it's mining and see if we can make anything out of it. All right, so I will show you the readings here, but here's the math. On the breakout board, and keep in mind this is the DC side, so if there's any electricians out there that can help me make sense of this, I would appreciate it. <laughs> So we are at 17 amps and at 12 volts, which equals 204 watts. Now, if we come over at the wall, we are at 271 watts at 117 volts. So that gives us a discrepancy of 271 watts minus 204 watts is 67 watts, or roughly just under 25% discrepancy. I'll just show you that right here. Here we go at the wall, 271, 118. And here we are at the breakout board, which is going between 16 and 17 amps at 12 volts on the DC side. 
Okay, so I just got a response back from Joseph over at Parallel Miner, and it turns out that this thing is pretty inaccurate as we found during our testing today when under 20 amps. So his recommendation is when you get to about 500 watts or 20 plus amps, 20 plus amps it's gonna start getting more accurate is what he said. And then somewhere around 500 watts you should be within about 5% of accuracy. So for what that's worth, maybe just use this directionally speaking until you get upwards of above 20 amps or around 500 watts. Uh, because on your smaller rigs, it's just not going to be that accurate. We'll do some more testing with that once we get this up and running on a bigger rig. But just as the Rev 1 version, I mean, this is every bit as good and more. <laughs> We've got more capabilities, more functionality. So I really love this board. If you didn't see the first video, I mean, I just can't recommend it enough for the price. I'll leave links to all of this in the show notes below if you want to take a look at it. But I highly recommend the Parallel Miner ZSX Amp Breakout Board. This is the Rev 2 version. And quite honestly, even if you get Rev 1, uh, that's been working really great for me. All right, that'll do it for this video today, Raptors. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Take care. Like